Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be creating an infrared photography effect using only Photoshop. So there are a few ways that you can capture infrared photography. You can go ahead and get your camera specially converted so that it only captures infrared light and that's quite expensive and probably not practical for most people who just want to dabble with infrared. Or you can use filters on the front of your lens on a regular camera and then with a little bit of processing, you can come out with some good infrared results. I've done that before. I've got a video here of how I process those images. But what we're doing today is just taking a regular image and we're going to create an infrared look using only Photoshop. So we're going to do a color image and a black and white. Let's take a look at how we do that. Okay, so this is the image we're going to look at first. I captured this at Berchtesgarten in Germany and this is what we're going to use for our color edit. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over here to the adjustments come down to channel mixer and create a new adjustment layer. You see it's placed it here above the image in the layers palette. And now we get these parameters here, which we can adjust. So where we've got output channel, we can drop that down and we can choose the channel. So I'm going to choose red. And then for the red output channel, we have three sliders of red, green, and blue. So I'm going to bring down the red slider to zero. And then I'm going to bump up the green to plus 200. And I'm going to bring down the blue slider to minus 100. Now I'm going to select the blue channel as the output channel. And I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to bring down the red to minus 100. I'm going to bump up the green again but I'm going to bring the blue down to zero. So you see now we are starting to get some of that pinkiness into the foliage and the background is starting to go a little bit blue. We maybe just want to bring back the red channel slightly to about there. So now we've got that nice balance. We've got some pinkiness in the foliage, the trees and the grass, and we've got the nice blues in the background there. So the next thing we're going to do is create another adjustment layer and this time we're going to choose hue and saturation. So we click that one, it applies another adjustment layer above the channel mixer one and now we can play around with the different sets of colours. So we're going to adjust the reds first and what I'm going to do here is just bring the hue to the left slightly, not a lot. Might need to adjust it later, but that's enough for now. And I'm going to bump up the saturation a little bit and bring down the lightness. So I think that's not looking too bad. Next, I will choose the blues. So with blues, again, I'm going to just slightly adjust the hue. I'm going to bring down the lightness now to about minus, minus 56. You'll notice that we're losing saturation in the background now. So this doesn't usually happen when playing around with hue, saturation and lightness sliders. But in combination with the channel mixer adjustment layer, it is creating that desaturation effect. So to compensate, we do have to bump up the saturation. So we'll just come up all the way to about there. So that's looking nice again. Magentas, I will again adjust the hue slightly. See what happens when I bring down the lightness. You see it's really washing out the foreground areas now. So we'll bring that back with the saturation slider up to about there. And maybe just tweak the reds again slightly. I'm just going to bring that back to where it was. Bring the saturation up a little bit. And I think that's not looking too bad. Remember, I've kind of got an idea of where I want these sliders to be already. I've had a little play around with this and I know roughly how I want to set this. But when you're doing it, just play around, tweak the sliders until you get something on screen that you're happy with. Okay, so I need this to be a lot brighter now. 
when you see those infrared images, they tend to be really high key. You've got those bright foliage areas. And so we're gonna do that by adding yet another adjustment layer, but this time we're gonna choose levels. So here we've got the histogram. Everything on the left here is the dark shadowy areas. We've got the highlights on the right and midtones in the middle. So if we bring this slider on the right to the left, you see the image really starts to brighten up. And I think round about there is gonna do it. We can just adjust the mid-tone slider a little bit to around about there. And I'm probably gonna leave the far left slider for now because I've got another way to inject some contrast into this image. And the way we're gonna do that is creating a new layer, which is a combination of the background image plus all of those adjustment layers applied. So the way we're gonna do that, it's a bit of a stretch, but on the keyboard, I'm gonna press, well, first of all, I'm gonna select those layers. Then I'm gonna press Command, Alt, Shift, and E, and it will merge those together and create a new layer with all of those effects applied. So what I can do with this now is just come up to Filter at the top here, come down to Blur, come across and down to Gaussian Blur, and then I want to play around with the slider until we're getting blurriness, but we don't want ridiculous blurriness like this. We still want to kind of roughly see what the image is, but it just needs to be very blurred out. So we'll click OK. And the reason we're doing this is because often when you're capturing infrared images, maybe not with converted cameras, but particularly with using filters, those filters block a lot of the light coming into the camera, so you're having to use really long shutter speeds, which tends to make things a little bit more blurry. You've got softness because of camera shake, you've got trees and leaves that are blowing around while that shutter's open. So you do get that softness. So what we're gonna do now with this layer selected is come down to soft light, and you see that's blended it with the background layers. It's added contrast, and it's also blended in that blurry layer with the sharper layer behind it. If that's too much, and it probably is just a bit, we can bring down the opacity, probably to about halfway, and that blends in quite nicely now. We've got that softness, we've got the contrast, we've got those classic infrared colors, and that is the final image. <laughs>Okay, so now we're going to look at the black and white edit. This was captured in a local woodland area. And this one's going to be much more simple, but we're going to do it in a similar way. So we're going to come over to the adjustments area again. Once again, select the channel mixer, create an adjustment layer. But this time we're going to select this little box here next to monochrome. So that obviously makes it monochrome. And now it's a case of playing around with these sliders again, but we don't have the different output channels now, we've just got gray. So I'm gonna adjust the red, I'm gonna bring that up to about 100. I'm also gonna bring the green up. So it's starting to blow out a little bit here. But as we bring the blue down to about a minus 100, you see we've got a fairly balanced image again uh, we've got those greens that are really starting to just get on the verge of being blown out, but not quite. So you've got that really infrared -y look where it's starting to get really bright with the foliage. But we do want some more contrast in this again. And once again, we're going to do that by duplicating a layer. So we can do this a bit more simply with this one. We can just duplicate the background layer. And we can apply that Gaussian blur once again. I think that's probably okay. Maybe just bring that back a touch. And once again, come down to soft light. You see it adds that contrast. It blurs it out. And that's about all we need to do for that one. So really nice and quick and simple. But we've achieved that black and white infrared look. So that's how you can create an infrared effect using only Photoshop. I hope you found this video useful. 
If you have, or you've liked the video in any way, please consider giving me a thumbs up just down below. I'd really appreciate that. It helps the video get spread a bit more widely and more people can benefit from these tips. That's about it for this one. A huge thank you for watching. If you're a regular, massive thank you to you. I massively appreciate that. And if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the subscribe button or over here on this picture of me. And that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot, everyone, and bye for now.